The war logs also show the U.S. imposed a formal policy to ignore human rights abuses committed by the Iraqi military under an order known as FRAGO 242, issued in June 2004. Coalition troops were barred from investigating any violations committed by Iraqi troops against other Iraqis. Um, it reads, quote, provided the initial report confirms U.S. forces were not involved in the detainee abuse, no further investigation will be conducted unless directed by uh, headquarters, HHQ. Um, David Lee, care to comment on that? Well, we need to know who drew up FRAGO 242, uh, who issued it, at what level was it authorized, and indeed why. Because by June 04, when that was brought in, I think they knew perfectly well that the Iraqi security forces, left to their own devices, would torture people, beat them to death, and uh, that, that the Americans uh, expressing disapproval or frowning at them wasn't really likely to alter a practice they learned under Saddam Hussein. Near Rosen. The Americans claim that because Iraq was sovereign after uh, June of 2004, that they were no longer responsible as, uh, as the occupying authority. But it's kind of an absurd claim, because they've since 2004 handed sovereignty back to the Iraq several times, most recently uh, just in September of, of this year. But they remained the occupying power. They were the ones training and funding and appointing and firing. Um, they were the ones who controlled the country and ruled the country. I just remembered a guy called Colonel Sabah who worked in 2006 and 2007 with uh, American colonels in western Baghdad. And what he would do, they knew it, and his own men told me, um, he would raid houses in western Baghdad, arrest the men, and uh, force the women to have sex with him in order to release the men. These were men who weren't charged with anything. It was just basically an excuse to rape women. Mm. I wanted to go to a video clip from November 2005 of an unusual exchange between then Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld and then Joint Chiefs of Staff Chair General Peter Pace. In what could have been a reference to the newly disclosed order to ignore Iraqi torture, Rumsfeld tried to correct Pace when Pace said U.S. forces should intervene if they witness abuses by Iraqi troops. It is, it is absolutely the responsibility of every U.S. service member, if they see inhumane treatment uh, being conducted, to intervene to stop it. But I don't think you mean they have an obligation to physically stop it. It's to report it. Uh, so you see him clarifying then Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld, who will soon be coming out of obscurity with his new book, Near Rosen. <laughs> I think that you had a variety of practices on the ground, depending on how serious uh, the, the officers were about exploring these incidents. I know in Amriya in western Baghdad there was an incident where the Iraqi army um, beat up a bunch of detainees with pipes, and the American soldiers who were accompanying them were reprimanded by their commanding officer for not somehow stopping it. Um, in other cases, it was just ignored, as I said, with that rape incident and, and a variety of other cases. Um, I think the Americans were sometimes also not aware of it because the Iraqis were good at hiding it from the Americans. But at the same time, it also worked, um, if, if you think about this, the El Salvador option, sort of a, a much more brutal way of, of uh, taking the fight to the insurgents. Um, then this crushed the spirits of the Sunni population of Iraq, let them know they were defeated. Um, terrorize them into the eventual submission and uh, perhaps the, the course of events that led to the rise of the awakening groups and Sunni militias stopping the war against the Americans and collaborating with the Americans. So from an American point of view, you could say maybe that this, these brutal tactics were perhaps effective. We're talking to Nir Rosen, investigative journalist just back from Iraq. David Lee, he is the uh, investigative editor at The Guardian of London. Um, Prothop Chatterjee is also with us, did a series for The Guardian of London for their website. He's also with the Center for American Progress that particularly looked at, well, what one piece is called Iraq War Logs Military Privatization Run Amok. Prothop, talk about what you were focusing on in this trove of, what, close to 400,000 documents? Well, Amy, I was focusing on the role of contractors. And so what I did was I searched for the names of contractors that we know, like Blackwater, like Aranis, like Olive Security and Zapata and Triple Canopy, to find out what had happened and what they had done. Now, as David mentioned, these are raw field reports from soldiers. These are not actually reports of the contractors. It is simply what the soldiers saw and what the soldiers reported. 
I found 111 incidents uh, in, regarding Blackwater. Many of them were Blackwater people, you know, running over uh, roadside bombs. But I also found uh, a number of reports in which Blackwater had fired at civilians. These are reports that have not been uh, written about before. Now, to me, what was interesting was the most famous incident of all, which is the Nisru Square incident. And if you look for Blackwater and you look for Nisru Square together, you don't find it. It doesn't exist initially. After a while, I was able to find that particular incident by searching on that particular day, and I found the incident of a State Department convoy in which nine people were killed. Now, I think that's very telling, because it shows that these reports are incomplete. They show that nine people were killed when we know for a fact the government has, uh, has uh, reported on this, 17 people were killed. And this is where I think it's so important. There was a separate uh, 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 a contractor by the name of Aegis that was required to report on everything that contractors did by their own reports. And I think if we looked at those logs, which we don't have available to us, we would find many, many more examples of contractors firing on civilians. And vice versa, I think we would find contractors themselves being shot at. And some of the most disturbing incidents are where the contractors shoot at the U.S. military, which you think would be is, is absurd. I mean, the U.S. military is very well marked. There's, there's a particular incident by a company called Zapata where they shoot at the Marines, and the Marines arrested them for doing this. And these are the things, I think, we're only getting a very uh, quick glimpse at what's happening. It only is when soldiers happen to be at the same site and they report correctly. That's all we're seeing. So this snapshot shows, in fact, that a lot of these contractors were out of control. And there was no way, in fact, I've had many discussions, I've been to Iraq a number of times, met with these people, there was no way for the Iraqis to be able to tell the Americans or anybody uh, what to do, especially since under Paul Bremer's order number 17, there was no recourse for them to go after these uh, uh, companies or these contractors. And even though that's been rescinded fairly recently, if an American was involved in killing an Iraqi, as many have been, you know, the New York Times has revealed a man from Seattle, Andrew Moonin, and uh, he was flown out of Iraq by Blackwater, and he came back to the U.S., and nobody has ever been able to prosecute him, nor the guards in Nisru Square. There have been lawsuits. The government has tried to do something about it, and they have failed. So these people acted with impunity, and uh, I know that near myself, many of us who spent uh, months in Baghdad saw these people, you know, traveling around and doing whatever they felt like. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Our guests are Prothop Chatterjee, investigative journalist, senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, independent investigative journalist near Rosen, just back from Iraq. And in London, we're joined by uh, Guardian editor David Lee. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.